and I think we're live. Hello, mm -hmm. everybody on YouTube. It is a Monday night. Wow, I totally read. Okay, I can't talk. All right, so this is the kind of night it's going to be. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we're on YouTube tonight with Lily Nova here, and she is also a fellow Starseed being. And mm -hmm. I am Savita, for those of you who have not been here yet. Welcome to the channel. This channel in particular focuses on Starseed beings and helping those basically get back with that side of theirs that they had before they came to Earth. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Lily. If you could kindly go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Lily Nova. I was form formerly called the UFO Whisperer for my um, contact with UFOs. And uh, now I've become a bit of a cosmic channel. And my main priority and focus now is helping share this information, share what I'm learning, and uh, help to connect other star seeds with their star origins. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> And for those of you that are just now hopping in, in my honest opinion, this is going to be a juicy interview tonight because we have quite a bit of content to show y'all. Mm -hmm. So if any of you have not been at a Starseed interview yet, what I do is go through about, what is it, three, six, seven questions to kind of uh, get to know the Starseed beings. That way other Starseeds can kind of resonate with different things and see maybe if certain experiences that someone else happens to go through, it can help them out. So mm -hmm. my first question that I'm going to ask you, Lily, mm -hmm. is if you could describe your first experiences of the paranormal, which mm. includes UFOs and light beings and stuff like that. Yeah. So um, in the beginning, it, it really just kind of came out of nowhere. And I think how it's been happening with a lot of other people is once COVID hit, everything just kind of hit the fan. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was really my first experience in the middle of COVID. I would, I got into astrophotography, which is taking photos of the night sky. And uh, so I was spending a lot of time out under the stars and, um, right outside of my house one night, I went outside and I looked over and there was a big old UFO <laughs> hovering over the neighborhood. <laughs> and uh, then another one appeared and it was a diamond triangular, some weird shape I'd never seen before. And it came straight to me and disappeared right above me. And um, yeah, so that was pretty intense. Um, and then after that, I started having a lot of UFO encounters. And then that's what led me to be like, okay, what's going on? First off, there are other beings here. Um, yeah. And so that was a really big paradigm shift. And then it led me down, you know, learning about the truth behind everything. So it started off with UFOs and very physical. And then it started as I learned more and, and discovered that I was a star seed, which it took a while for me to realize that. Um, then it started becoming more kind of a, a spiritual and having those non-physical experiences with them. Thank you for that. <laughs> oh, that's exciting. So I, I can only imagine your reaction. You're just like young and you look up above and you just see this triangle hovering above you and it's just like, it's just gone of a blink of an eye. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I was in shock. It was um, shocking, but I did, I grabbed my phone and I was like, holy crap, I think this is a UFO um, the, for the first one. The second one, as it was coming near me though, that may, I kind of took a step back and I was like, whoa, um, it's very shocking. But I really think that there was a big calling in my heart to learn more and the curiosity it overcame any fear or um, shock really. Yeah. I like how you said that because that literally describes how it is when you go through this, like it, it takes a while, but mm -hmm. when, when you're just so curious at this point, like you don't, mm -hmm. you'll go dive down the rabbit hole and you don't care what you're going to find. <laughs> yeah. And you feel like this big calling to, you know, there's something more, you just feel really called to this information. So even though it's kind of scary and you're stepping into the unknown, um, I think we know, we know in our heart that, um, you know, that's where we are supposed to be. And there's, there's things to learn <laughs> and start being to see. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, it's, it's been really growing, especially since COVID. Funny how you mentioned that. Um, if mm -hmm. any of you have seen my previous YouTube videos, I mentioned how a lot of people happened to awaken during COVID. Mm -hmm. That was low key an intentional shift right. <laughs> that was done on purpose, you know? But thank yeah. you for sharing your first experiences. And it's funny how you brought up um, 
when you first learned about star seeds, because that's the follow up question is if mm -hmm. you could paint us a picture of your star seed awakening, like where were mm -hmm. you? What would it, what was it like? Your emotions, like what, what, just tell us about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it took me a while to learn about star seeds actually, because I was very focused on learning about the UFOs and learning who they were, how they worked, because I would see them popping in and out of dimensions and just the science part of it really fascinated me. So um, it took me probably, you know, at least a few months or four months or so. And whenever I started, um, whenever I started hearing about star seeds and actually it was a psychic who told me, um, this is, this is how I found out. And I literally bawled my eyes out, but, um, I went to a group meditation and my friend's mother was there. She, uh, had the singing bowls and very experienced and very clairvoyant, clear audience. And she looked over at me and she said, um, Lily, your star family's here. And I was like, what? <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. And that's oh, how I found out. Yeah. Okay. Keep going. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's how I found out. Um, and still at the time, like, it was kind of, you know, like, I have a star family. You know what? Like, it was just kind of like a big, you know, a big deal. And I didn't quite understand it. But it, it became very, it was very emotional after that. And, um, and then I had another confirmation. I actually went to go see a psychic because I was trying to figure out who these UFOs were, because I was seeing them so often, they were connecting with me. Um, I was developing kind of a telepathic communication with them, um, the early stages of it. And uh, the first thing she said right off the bat, and she's like, you're Pleiadian. And those are Pleiadians who are coming to see you. And uh, also a very emotional moment. So <laughs> that's kind of how it started. Um, and then I was like, okay, so the star seed thing is real. At first I didn't believe it because I'm like, that sounds kind of like fantasy, you know? Um, and so then I actually started looking into it and learning, um, you know, what the star seeds are here for and, and that there are tons of star seeds on this earth that are now awakening and all these concepts started coming to me. Um, but besides that, then it became very emotional. I feel like everything, even like right before the UFOs, kind of just started falling apart. It's like everything old is, you know, leaving and you're having this whole, this huge shift. So it, you're having an ego death essentially and everything that you thought you knew is changing. So um, it was a bit emotional. I spent uh, probably a couple months in my room crying, <laughs> you know, just kind of letting it all out and stuff. Yeah. Um, but besides that, it's been, it's been a very beautiful, you know, learning everything and having these beautiful experiences with these uh, star beings and UFOs. So, um, and then it really just kind of, I feel like they were leaving me breadcrumbs, you know, signs and synchronicities. Those started happening which also makes you question reality because yeah, you're like, like all of a sudden you're seeing all these numbers and colors, <laughs> signals and signs, just like every, all these patterns. And it's like, clearly exactly. there's something going on here. Exactly. So that's another thing you kind of think, you know, am I going crazy? Is this real? You know, what's the nature of reality? Um, a lot of signs and synchronicities. And so quickly, I was so impressed. Like literally as soon as I thought of something, I'd look over and the answer would be right there pretty uh trippy stuff but so um yeah that was basically <laughs> that kind of sums sums it up loosely <laughs> oh what an interesting time i can only imagine just because uh, as, as you were saying at first you didn't believe in it or, or you mm -hmm. questioned it at least and mm -hmm. i get it you know all of us just all of a sudden there's a pandemic anything else is possible and mm -hmm. then when you're first going through these awakening stages, you notice that there's just so many synchronicities going on. And it's, mm -hmm. it's not a coincidence. We're past the point of coincidences, people. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Wow. So Definitely. you have a strong uh, relation to the Pleiadian and that's following up to question number three is mm -hmm. which starseed uh, beings or races resonate with you the most? So is it mm -hmm. just Pleiadian or like, what do you have with them? Actually, I feel like Pleiadian was kind of the the least um, 
my first connection was and this this is a good tip for anybody too if you go outside and just spend some time stargazing whatever you feel a calling to could be you know your star origins so if you have a certain star or constellation just like i know you have an orion tattoo um you know something because your but your your soul already knows so you know your first kind of gut feeling um in my first connection was serious i was like became obsessed with the star Sirius and just felt this calling and you know started learning about you know the ancient egyptians and they had Sirius everywhere yeah um so that was my first connection. And then the clairvoyant at the meditation group, who, whenever she said your star family is there, she said, I can see Lyrans. And uh, so that was, that's my, that's kind of the main one that I feel connected to. And those are the ones that I see the most. And I worked with a lot through there. I was just like talking to them every day. Um, and then also a little Pleiadian, but I think so Lyran, Syrian and Pleiadian. Interesting combo. And mm -hmm. I think that's really cool that going back to the one of the most fundamental principles of physics, that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can be transformed, changed one form to another, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. So it's interesting to think that you probably had so many reincarnations or these many multidimensional versions of yourself from mm -hmm. all these different areas. Like I started to notice, you know, personally diving through the research on star seeds that the majority of the time you, you don't resonate with just one right you resonate yeah. with a bunch for me personally it's orion and arcturian and you have a triple combo that's a triple threat that's cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. awesome yeah we're it, kind it, of like opposites you got orion or yeah orion and arcturus and, and, um, it's and i got the other three main ones <laughs> that that's interesting like honestly that yeah. that's really freaking cool um mm -hmm. so you resonate with lyran the most and then pleiadian and a in sirius as well that's mm -hmm. that's really cool so do you know how they like communicate with you like do you know which ones you're currently talking to do you know what they're like if you want to bring up any thing that you would like to share i can mm -hmm. go ahead and do that if you're ready to share oh yeah so um yeah let me show you some pictures so so my first the first time i ever saw one and this could be good for people to give this you know set their intention out there and give it a shot because they can actually send you visuals um, and that's that's also something that I've been developing and working on. But the first time I saw one, I was out and I did a CE5 contact, which is human initiated contact with UFOs. And I will share the picture of what they looked like. It was pretty, pretty cool. It was some interesting stuff. Like, yeah. I, this, is the, this is a juicy interview. Just whew, the stuff. Oh. <laughs> y'all we are here for a reason yep oh no i don't know if it's letting me oh try one more time share where is it okay share screen okay here we go here we go okay so i'll show you guys what this um this what the UFO looked like whenever I, I went to go make contact with it. And um, it showed up as a golden orb. And here's a picture of it. And, oh and that, God. yeah, and that was moving around. I was trying to ask it questions and it would move around and like, it was kind of like trying to answer. And uh, my friend who I was with was like, let's try and close our eyes and see if we can get any information that way. And I closed my eyes and it sent me a vision. And I'll show you. <laughs> the vision was of a woman who looked like this. Oh, wow. And she was in a like a gray silver uniform, like a space uniform. She was laying down. She had no hair. She had light blue skin. She was very beautiful. And I could see uh, like her crew members were standing behind her. I couldn't see their faces. She was like laying down on this table with her eyes closed. And um, so that was the first one that I saw. And I found out later that uh, she was Lyran. And Which goes back to one of your uh, connections. Yep. Yes, exactly. So me and her are closely, closely connected. I later learned that her name was Talia. And 
Um, she's who I connected with for major for the most part. That's who I mostly connect with. Um, they, and I'll stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, very, very just peaceful, high vibrational beings. Whenever you can, whenever you connect with them, you may feel just an overwhelming love in your heart that it, it can make you emotional. I don't know if you ever have instances like that where suddenly you're just kind of like overwhelmed with like a, a positive feeling. Yeah. Um, but that's really what it mostly consisted of, um, how I would know that they're there or an ear ringing. Um, yeah, because that, that's a common one too. Yeah. So whenever your ears ring, you're getting vibration, you know, high vibrations and downloads sent to you. Um, and yeah, and the Pleiadians, they have a very, a very warm energy, a very positive and very like compassionate energy, the times that I've kind of connected with them. So as you kind of connect with them, you can kind of sense a little bit of a different energy for, for each one. That's, that's interesting. Cause I never thought about it like that, that they would have a different kind of vibe. I mean, I guess it makes sense because they all have mm -hmm. different purposes and motives. Um, but I wanted to ask, since you mentioned the name of this Lyran being that you saw, uh, how did you find out her name? So, and you know, everybody has, has gifts that it would literally come to me like telepathically, but not like words. It would come to me as just like a feeling and a knowing. Yeah. Like, I, you know, I would ask, ask a question and then suddenly I just, it just knew popped the, in your head. Yeah. It would just pop yeah. in my head. Um, and, but they usually communicate with me through that feeling, but also through visuals, a lot of visuals. And recently I've heard some auditory, some words too. Um, so yeah, but mostly a feeling and just kind of a knowing it's like a, what they call downloads where just information just pops right in your head. It literally and you can't explain it. Like you can't make it up. It just tumbles in your brain like word vomit. It just pops. Right. Um, we do actually have a question in the chat. Let me make sure that there's no other questions here. Sorry, everybody. We're just so into this. Like this is this is pretty cool. <laughs> so we have a question from Jeff, my dad. What's up, dad? Uh, he says, Lily, are you familiar with Dorothy Izad and her encounters? I'm not sure if you've heard of her. No, I don't know. She was, oh, I'm not sure what year she was alive. And I don't know why my camera's getting fuzzy. Sorry, everybody. But she was an older woman that recorded tons and tons of footage on, I believe, eight millimeter film. I don't want to butcher what? that. But she literally had like frame by frame of these light beings and just these oh my gosh. little squiggles of light. Let me see if I can find one on Google real quick. Dora I was, Rosie. I was about to say, I got to write her down and check hers out. And I'll show oh, you guys my right. light being pictured too. But <laughs> yeah, so let me see if I can bear with us, everybody. Because, you know, we're just going with the flow here. Like this is something in case nobody understands what we're talking about. I just want to show that... Let me go ahead and share my screen. Share. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. So for those of you that don't know, this is kind of what those light squiggly things look like that mm -hmm. this woman captured on her camera for years and years. Obviously, this wouldn't be the exact picture, but she literally caught stuff like this on film. And when she got it developed, like you could literally see it break down and teleport from one spot to another. And I thought that was kind of interesting when my father told me about that. So yeah, you, you'll like that. There mm -hmm. is a, um, a documentary on her. It's like 45 minutes on Amazon Prime Video, if anybody okay. has access to that. Yeah, I'm going to check that out. And that That's brings cool. up a, a really interesting point that these beings just the way that they maneuver around yeah. and you know they can just appear out of nowhere and they can come in all these different forms so it's just it's really cool and yeah. when you watch the documentary um you literally see a a, a scene in the mm -hmm. documentary of i believe it's her daughter 
standing at the kitchen window and you can see a light in the background moving behind her and then you see an orb move to like her throat chakra whoa yeah like in the documentary like as they're filming it and they didn't realize it till later on that an orb flew in front of her as she was talking about them that's amazing it is really amazing so if mm -hmm. none of y'all have seen that you need to check it out yeah, and dad awesome. he says that there's oh my gosh that's a that's a lot of feet of freaking footage wow yeah, but, I'm going to have to go binge that. <laughs> it, it is a good documentary. It's short, not too dreadful, not too long. And it, honestly, it's it's really interesting to just, because so many people get, you know, shit for this. So yeah. many people are judged for this or called crazy or, but that's why we're here together. Right. Right. And it's it's nice to get some actual like physical evidence. And that's what I was focusing on hard for the first like six months, just trying to capture evidence and show people like, look, like, like we're not crazy. So speaking of evidence, <laughs> that one that you showed me, the light being one. Yes. Okay. This other uh, picture that Lily has to share with you guys is freaking phenomenal. I thought that was cool. And it's funny because she didn't realize it till after. Mm -hmm. And that's usually how it works. Um, yeah. Just to do a little short story, my spiritual awakening trip was last summer. I went to visit my dad's side of the family. And I ended up capturing a pi picture of a ghost in like a 1780s brick house. And I didn't realize till I came back and you could see this ghoul face and like this black cowl. And I was just like, whoa. <laughs> Whoa, I didn't it was see creepy. that. <laughs> um, can, can you see my screen? I can add it to the stream. Yes. Or no, ready. Oh, can you see it on the yes. screen? Okay. I just awesome. didn't want to share like your. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thing. Yeah. All right. Here it is. So tell us the story about this picture. So um, I was literally just taking a picture of um it, it was an old classroom that i was working on and i just went down there and was taking pictures of it for memory you know I'm, i've been the classroom I haven't been using it haven't been down there in a while and uh i i was just taking a picture of it i didn't see it until about two weeks later i just saw it it was sticking out like a sore thumb on my one drive that there was this whole light being in there and so it's really interesting. I did not see it with my own eyes, but at the time I was meditating a lot and I could feel them around me a lot. So this was just amazing physical, you know, evidence. And it also makes you wonder, there's little rainbows in it. Little rainbows. Yeah. Oh, snap. I do see that down there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. See, so now that, pretty. that's how you know that, like, yeah, your, your camera's not broken. No, 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 no. That's... <laughs> That's a light being. That's yeah, it actually looks like you can kind of see like a head right yeah. here too. Oh, wow. And I don't know if there's more of them up around here, but there. if you look around here, there's also, it looks like. Some streaks on the walls too. Yeah, streaks. They Yeah, they've come to me in groups, um, even in the clouds too. That could be another manifestation of um, that they can do is showing themselves in clouds and through signs like that like i've looked up and i saw like a whole silhouette being and multiple ones behind it kind of just like that that's so beautiful yeah oh my gosh i <laughs> we're not crazy like this stuff is actually like coming out of the closet more like it, it's nice to know that people are actually accepting this and acknowledging mm -hmm. it and that we're finding other people that have had these experiences. And it's just, it's weird because for me personally, I've seen basically this lifetime before. And when COVID happened, I don't know about you. So actually I'm, I am curious when COVID first happened, because you said that's when your starseed stuff was awakening. Mm -hmm. Did you also feel like that you lived COVID-19 before? I've, I don't, that thought didn't, hadn't come to me, but whenever it happened, I just knew that this it's was something. like a reset. Yeah, yeah. I like I knew it in my heart, this is like a reset and this is going to change the world forever. Yeah. And so. 
that's that i like the way how you say that a freaking reset because oh my god we caused so much damage to our poor blue pearl oh, yeah oh, and brain. so much damage to ourselves you know i knew that this was gonna be like at the time i was a nutritionist and i was like oh now everybody has to learn how to cook and eat their fruits and vegetables so that they can get healthy is how i was thinking originally <laughs> um <laughs> you know but i just knew it was going to be a great opportunity and something that um I mean, disastrous and chaotic. I didn't, I don't think I realized how the extent of that with all the political stuff and everything, but yeah, I knew it in my heart. Like I already knew what it was. Like that, that there was something heart. bigger at play here. Like, cause me personally, and um, just because you and I haven't had these conversations before, I'll bring it up. And if any of you who are watching and first time here, hello again, I'll share this story with you. So I had basically a vision way before 2010 basically seeing the 2020s people that I know now. Wow. I can't make that up. So my father, I see, I've seen the 2020s of my father back in before 2010. All the people that I've met recently and between you, because now I remember you, Priscilla, Benji, and a bunch of other people from the Disclosure team, as well as Laura and other folks that even live around me, I felt like I've met them all before and yeah. it's kind of funny how that works. And as soon as COVID happened, I was like, I feel like I've seen this before. Yeah. People are like, Oh yeah. It's ours in the early two thousands. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. where it's global masks. I'm not talking about like five people who have a case. No, I mean like this has happened before. Mm -hmm. and so I was basically given the vision of this time period and how we were sent down here to basically reshift that balance and go back to the way humanity was back in ancient civilizations because we lost who the hell we used to be. Yeah. We lost who we used to be. Like, yeah, there's cultures on this planet that still follow suit, but the majority of the planet forgot, as you said, yes. Mm -hmm. And it is heartbreaking. But they literally told me, like, the 2020s pandemic, like, that's the shift. Like, they mm -hmm. told me about that. So I'm like, are y'all doing this? <laughs> <laughs> or what <laughs> but it's just interesting to did you think that was weird at the time having this vision G girl i'll tell you i woke up the next morning i'm like a pandemic okay because i it, it was like one of those dreams where um well first off i was like i was still in middle school and i'm mm -hmm. like oh well a dream is probably just a dream i still wrote it down but i don't have my dream journals from back then anymore but it was it was really weird and like mm -hmm. tons of people were dying left and right but i think that's just more of a worry of losing your loved ones rather than a lot of people actually physically dying but it was really weird i literally woke up the next day like oh please that's not gonna happen and then fast forward what 10 12 years later i'm 25 wow. and here we are and i'm like oh snap mm -hmm. all these people are real this this actually happened Mm -hmm. it's like we shifted worlds or something it's it's yeah. weird like as it, soon as the clock stroke covid everything was deja vu wow and that brings up a a crazy point that was one of the first things that the star beings taught me was that because they kept showing me the number three and i'm like what's that mean oh my and, god <laughs> <laughs> and and i think it could be kind of different things depending on you know what what the specific message is for you, but they, they showed me this YouTube video. Um, and I watched it and it was explaining that the significance of the number three was for the past, present and future, and that it's all actually happening at the same time and it's all connected. Yeah. So that really tripped me out. So that's how you can have like these visions or premonitions um, because somewhere on an alternate timeline or on another, another plane it's happening right now simultaneously yeah. like literally the start to finish well I, there's not even a start to finish but literally everything in every form of every thought way purpose event could happen has happened and will happen mm -hmm. that's why some people are able to see visions from other parts of their lives and mm -hmm. god everything else like mm -hmm. i've already had visions where that had to pertain to people that i know personally getting into car accidents and they've happened oh, no. um i knew i called out someone cheating on my friend <laughs> that was another one predicted a job but the whole COVID thing is just it's weird how it's well, woken up so many people mm -hmm. just as soon as it happened it's like there's something bigger going on here For and sure. it's a fat reset button i like the way you said that
Mm -hmm. I do. But anyways, sorry to get off the side of the road there, but I do have a, a next question for you. Um, and if you're not okay with sharing it, that's fine. Cause I know some people are personal with their spiritual information, but if you, have you had any lessons or objectives so far since you've been on earth that you know about? Um, <clears throat> tons and tons of lessons. Um, but I think for objectives, what, what I got whenever this started going on, you know, I just knew I had to share it with people and to help spread awareness. And, um, and whenever I was doing a CE5 and connecting with them, they telepathically told me that I'm to share the beauty of making contact and like the beauty of, you know, connecting with them and also discovering who we all really are, um, activating our DNA because they, you know, scientists say like 98% of it is junk DNA, which we all know that nature never does anything by accident. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there's a, there's a purpose there. And, um, so I think that's really my main objective is sharing teaching and helping others to awaken and just learning what I can. Um, and for lessons, man, there's been so many, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's like a lesson every day. I feel like, honestly. Hey, did you wipe your ass today? No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, really, um, probably one of the biggest ones that I've learned is that, you know, it's all about energetics and it's all about frequency and vibration. Um, and that, and that's new to me. I didn't know anything about that. Well, you know, you can sense energy, you know, that energy is important, but, um, you know, the universe is mental and, uh, there's these universal laws in the Emerald tablet, supposedly written by Thoth, the Atlantean. Um, if, if you want to check that out, or if anyone would be interested in that, it has universal laws in it. And that's like one of the main things is the universe is mental. So, you know, your thoughts and what you're thinking, you really have to become a master of your mind. So I think that's been kind of my biggest, um, lesson learning how to, um, work that energy and manipulate it to have the best possible outcome and, you know, have more positive experiences and another one is releasing trauma, letting go of old trauma. I think with the great shift that's happening right now, because we've had all these previous lives before, we're really old souls. Um, we've got a lot of baggage and things that could be affecting us that, you know, like trust issues or a phobia against something. Um, all of these things can actually come from other lifetimes. And I think this is kind of the lifetime where all of that's coming to the surface and it's getting kind of chaotic. And um, <clears throat> so just learning to kind of become aware of that and heal and release it. I like it, the way you put that. <laughs> thank you. Wow. <laughs> because that makes sense. I'm here thinking about my phobias. I'm like, I mean, my biggest one's cockroaches, but that could have been just because I was trying to go to the bathroom one day and I flung the toilet paper roll and it came out of the pa toilet paper roll and I was freaking out. But yeah, yeah, I don't like spiders. <laughs> <laughs> probably like, Ugh, no. And I've always felt uh, had like a weird fear about like car accidents. So I probably died in a car crash before or something. Um, but one that the star beings showed me. And I was out on a jog and then suddenly just like as I, as I closed my eyes, I got a flash of, and this is kind of intense, but um, a woman burning at the stake. And I had had this vision before and they told me this is one of your past lives and you're holding on to a lot of trauma from this life. Yeah, it, it was um, back in like old England times where they were burning, like they burned millions of women for, you know, witchcraft or spirituality. Um, you, you sneeze and you ha and you're a girl, you're getting burned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And if you are a healer trying to spread the message, like we do trying to heal naturally and, and, and trying to, you know, anything esoteric, I'm sure they're probably like, that's dark magic or, yeah. you know, whatever. And so that, 
that was causing a big fear of being able to be myself and publicly help, you know, help people and spread the message. So they basically told me, you got to, you got to become aware of this and then you got to let it all out. And it was like a very emotional night, but afterwards I felt better. Yeah. Um, Cause you're slowly remembering who you were and it's, mm -hmm. it's heartbreaking, but at the same time, you feel like you're finding your way closer and closer to your answers and home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's an emotional exactly. roller coaster of for damn sure. Mm -hmm. oh, my God. It is. I it did is. want to go to the chat real quick because I know it's been a minute, but Diesel Girl mentioned since we were talking about the shift, how it'll be worth it. And I think so. And it's 100. kind of funny how multiple people have noticed this. Like I thought I was the only one. And then next thing I know, I'm running down the star seed line and I'm running into all these people. And I'm like, oh shit, why'd you look at that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like everyone mm -hmm. has all these similarities and and it's wild. And then Benji mentioned going back to the number three, how it's a divine number, past, present, future, as you said. Oh my, yeah, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, mind, body, soul. Mm -hmm. It is practically like a number of unison, mm -hmm. almost. Like it brings everything together. And mm -hmm. I don't know why threes are always sent our way, but mm -hmm. like for me, I see a lot of three, three, threes, and three, one, three. Like I'm not kidding. My boyfriend and I just had Cracker Barrel, which is, if you're not familiar with it, it's a breakfast joint. In, somewhere in the south, I guess. But literally, <laughs> our ticket number was 333. Yep. And he said, that's fucked up. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> because he's slowly starting to notice. And now he's like, okay, you know what? I know you're not crazy. Like, it's not that he thought I was. He's just like, you know. You, you don't know, believe it until it. Energy wants that black and white proof. Yeah. You know? Not to be sexist. It's just a fact. The masculine mm -hmm. energy just focuses more on concrete evidence. So when it comes to number synchronicities, that's like a good beginning step for you know the masculine to start notice that like oh this stuff is actually like legit mm -hmm. and then uh, aside from his car accident that i called oh wow yeah that that was an interesting night but see i'm psychic <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's like it's not that it's something that i asked for it just happened because mm -hmm. that literally that one dream like covid meeting all these people giving down the run line it's like I, they showed me my entire life ahead of me in that same night. Wow. If you've seen the movie Click by chance, it's yeah. literally like that scene when Morty takes Adam Sandler in the blue room and flips his life ahead of him, like all in one night. Yeah. So it's like fast forward. It's like all of these memories start to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, do you do any kind of like meditations or anything that help you remember? Like what what's your what, what's your secret? so yeah um affirmations are huge and i did man i turned into like a monk and was meditating like every day for a couple months for a while there uh, but i started off easy you know just meditating for 10 15 minutes in the shower as you work on developing the skill and being able to calm your mind um but yeah i've done tons of meditations but a big thing is while I was listening to meditation music and I would listen to frequency music to help raise the frequency. And uh, if you know about like the crown chakra, that's how we in the third eye, that's how we receive information. So I focused on those energy centers, but I want to give a disclaimer. Um, don't focus only on those because you'll get undergrounded really quick <laughs> and uh, it can get bad really quick. So um <laughs> So I would start at the bottom and work your way up, but um, I would focus on those receiving information and open up to that universal connection. And I would repeat affirmations. I am activating my star seed DNA. I am remembering who I am. And I did that every day, every, every day. And as I would do that, and I am developing my psychic gifts, um, I would see it like happen right before my eyes. I was testing it out while I was meditating and <laughs> <laughs> I would test it out while I was meditating, you know, kind of just playing around with different energy techniques and different affirmations and, and ways of thinking. And whenever I'd say these things, I could feel and see the visions getting stronger and just feel like a bigger connection. Um, so, yeah, I think affirmations are huge. Um, it's 811 right now. And that's like that's a number I've been seeing all the time. Oh, is it really? Oh, well, 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 here. Oh, for here, it's 9 11. 
<laughs> funny short story with 9-11 i used to see 9-11 on the clock all the time um mm. and then my aunt happened to get married on 9-11 that was oh, a funny wow. one and she um is also super psychic she's not tech savvy so i know she's legit on this she was on the phone with me one time and she told me that she had like a vision of these like praying mantis looking things Oh my God. I'm sure people have heard of like the praying mantis looking figures, but she said that she had a vision and I'm curious if you or anybody in the chat has any resonance to this. She said that she saw basically a Stargate was blocked and there were lines of light beings, but that the door was shut and they're not letting people through because something's stopping it, which I guess is maybe our hiccup that's going on on earth. So she said these praying mantis people were the guardians of these gates and that they wouldn't let anybody through, but that they weren't hostile or anything. And then I ended up doing research and I'm like, dude, I found this website, um, debbysolaris.com. And she talks about all the starseed stuff. It's practically a really popular website to learn about starseed stuff. If you haven't gone there before, mm -hmm. I will totally send you the link later or drop it in the description. But they talk about the Antari Stargate. And that connects the Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy. And the guardians that guarded this gate were praying mantis people. Oh, my God. So it's like, I know who? she's not making that up. Yeah. Who was that? Who saw that? My aunt. My, aunt? my father's older sister. Yes. Uh, she, Does she know anything about star seeds or star beings nope. or anything? Well, well, now she does because when yeah. I was on my trip last summer, uh, her and I had a lot of heart to heart combos and I was pretty much telling her what's been happening to me too. And she's like, yeah. Oh my God, that, that makes so much sense. And she also resonates a little bit towards Sirius. Um, mm -hmm. cause she always has a calling to the ocean, uh, towards the ocean. She mm -hmm. literally recently just moved down to the shore house over in Jersey and she's like, I don't know, just something was calling me back to the water. And mm -hmm. I'm like, eh, you might be a Syrian because they have all of the whales and dolphins. And mm -hmm. they're like practically the, the popular water planet that a lot mm -hmm. of people know about. Um, but when I told her about the praying mantis people, she's like, that's wild. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is I just heard this from somebody else the other day that their dad um, took DMT. And whenever they did that, he saw praying mantis beings. And I don't remember what they said to him or whatever, but you know, they, they say whenever you, you do that, you see different beings. And so that's another person who had no idea about star beings or anything. That's just like so much proof right there. Literally, <laughs> yes. It's like for, um, I don't want to say normal people cause that's going to sound mean, but for the people who haven't awakened or who aren't exposed to this topic, hmm the fact that they're able to connect to it too. Mm -hmm. That gives us hope because it's like, yeah. we're, it's starting. The shift is happening. It's mm -hmm. happening. So that that's cool. So I don't know if anybody's familiar with the praying mantis people. Um, actually, speaking of DMT, I happen to <laughs> go see this. Oh, and thank you, Nick, for hopping into the chat, even though you probably already left, but thank you. Um, she said that my dad had a DMT trip and seen praying mantis beings around the earth. Oh, yeah. Oh. I think he's the one who told me about it. Yeah, that's awesome. I was just like, just imagine <laughs> you see the these things and their eyes are like this big, like on the side of their heads and they're, oh, God. Yeah, it's so oh. fascinating that there are beings, like there's lion beings, there's feline beings, there's the avians that are half bird um, beings. There's all these different beings and it makes you wonder so if we have birds and lions and all these cats and all these animal praying mantises and all these things on earth, it would seem like their genetics are connected somehow, right? Like, mm -hmm. did they just take samples of everybody and put it on earth or what? Um, it's been said that earth is the most diverse place. Um, but there's just all different kinds of life here. So that's just a really interesting um, it is an interesting point. Yeah, it is an interesting point. Um, if you go, um, I believe I forgot what it was I was watching on Gaia, but it was basically saying I just I was half asleep. I heard this, that they were saying that Earth is basically the final experiment, per se. So that would mm -hmm. make sense on mm -hmm. how we have all of these different beings and races and species here that have the connection to these other constellations. Mm -hmm. That could make sense. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. But. Apparently Earth is very, very, very important. And there's a lot of eyes on Earth right now. 
there's also a lot of um, beings that are helping us. You know, we all have like our own entourage with us. We just may not see them, but yeah. there's a lot of like light beings. There's even angels. And that tripped me out whenever I saw my first angel. And I was like, whoa, they're real. They really exist, but they, they really do. Um, so we've got a lot of helpers and a lot of eyes right now. <laughs> yeah. And it's up to us to receive the information and spread the word. We're all prophets for these beings. We're literally here to be the wave that shifts everything. Mm -hmm. so. and, uh, and to anchor that the cosmic energy and bring down the different light codes from Sirius or from Lyra, from all these places. And uh, so that we can evolve and eventually be back with our star families. <laughs> yeah. I've been crying. Like, I miss you guys so much. I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you agreed to be here. I'm like, Did I, know? I don't remember that. Get it? Because we go through amnesia. I don't remember yeah. saying that. So you can't hold me to this. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's kind of sad because a, a lot of people, like I'll get comments on TikTok and stuff. A lot of people just really hate being here. A lot of star seeds really hate being here. Okay. And they just want their star family to come take them away, which I've been guilty of thinking that. And I know that it's really hard sometimes. But, um, you know, in the end, we did agree to be here. But we can also ask for assistance from, you know, our star families and stuff. And they'll they'll help. We're just going through kind of a rough patch. Um, but then we will be able to make a, once it's all said and done, it'll be so worth it. So. Yes, absolutely. And I'm just I'm so eager to see how it's going to be like just fast forward 10 years from now, who knows where we're going to be 10 years ago, yeah. social media was at its peak. <laughs> and then yeah. here we are, it's already evolved. And it's like 10 years from now, who knows, like, are we going to start seeing more light orbs just casually going through the skies? Like, mm -hmm. are we going to be more accepting of this? Mm -hmm. like, I think I think it's big. I think it's going to get big over, over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. During um, a meditation once whenever I was connecting with the Lyrans, I asked, like, when are you guys just going to come down already? Like, when are you going to, when, when can I meet you? And, you know, in person. And I got the number 2030s is when they'll be coming down. Yeah. So I think it's going to happen faster than we think. That is so funny that you said that because I remember hearing 33, like, remember 33. So maybe 2033. I don't know. Because yeah. I, we've seen a lot of threes, like maybe March 3rd, 2033. Could be. Who knows? And that's funny. 10 years from now is going to be then. Mm -hmm. huh. If it happens, we're going to have to like get in contact with everybody. Like, Look, we called it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, basically it's like, hey, y'all thought we were crazy. You see? You, you mm -hmm. see that? Yeah. No, the sky's falling. Yeah. You know, yeah. chicken little's <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, but anyways, so it's going back to the questions. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of brushed up on this earlier, but I kind of wanted to go into depth with it. Um, what are your current psychic gifts that you have developed? Mm. So um, the third eye and vision has been really big one for me. Um, and the, the feeling, cl uh, clear cognizance, but the vision has been the one that for the most part that I've been uh, practicing hard and developing and clear audience recently um, I actually was in meditation the other day and I saw like the silhouettes of uh, the Pleiadians in a, in a spaceship and I heard like plain as day excursion. And I was like, what, what? I didn't even know what excursion meant. I had to look it up and it, and it means like a, it means like a, a trip or like, like they were going on a trip. And yeah. so that just really tripped me out. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended. <laughs> yeah. It really tripped me out. Um, so that one's kind of newer, but really uh, clairvoyance in vision. Oh. Um, and my first actual intense experience with that, which for anybody who, well, everybody has a gift, has something that they're more in tune to or more just naturally gifted at. Um, your first experience, I think I heard this from Priscilla, your first experience could be the most intense. Um, and so that's how I first realized that that's what my gift was. I was in a meditation and suddenly like I was just blasted off to another like planet. Like it looked like I was, it looked like a movie was playing in kind of fast forward, all these yeah. different movie scenes. And it was just, I didn't know this at the time, but it was just taking me through all my past lives. And I looked like I was literally in, in this movie set. I, whenever I was done 
I was like, I, I felt like I was about to float away. It was really intense. Um, wait, wait, wait. So, so this was like a meditation. And yes. You just, so, so I guess that's kind of similar to what I was talking about, how you were able to see your entire life, but you said multiple lives. Yes, exactly. I, yeah, I almost said that whenever you mentioned that because I had a similar experience, but mine was like going backwards. Like I saw, or maybe not, not backwards, but just other lifetimes. Yeah. Multiple aside from Lily Nova's future self. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that and I, further proves that there's something going on here because we both clearly had a very similar experience with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, and even with uh, Benji in the chat, if I can call you out, Benji, he's been uh, definitely helping me with Arcturian stuff um, because I have a mix of the two, Orion and Arcturian. But just it, it's just the stuff is is just wild. It's yeah. I would love to say, by the way, I freaking love the Octarians. I love them. Are they, they are cool? yeah. They are such. They're they're just such balanced, intelligent, positive beings. So peaceful. Like whenever I see them, it's just a very like you can tell they're they're very evolved. They're like the most technologically advanced, and I just they've helped me a lot with doing like healing energy and doing meditations with them. So for meditations, I would also suggest, which I'm going to be recording some, but you know, if you feel a drawing like towards a certain um, star seed type, or um, I would do find some meditations on connecting with them and see where it leads. Um, but yeah, they're beautiful beings. I love them. <laughs> and they could be extremely sarcastic and comical. Like, I don't remember how long ago this was, but I was driving, coming back here from my boyfriend's, which is like an over an hour trip. And I was testing them. And if those of you who haven't seen this uh, interviews before that I've had, I'll share this story again. I was just driving, testing things. And I'm like, you know what? If this is actually legit and you're who I'm talking to, send me an orange car on my left. Okay. And then just an orange truck drove by like literally within 30 seconds. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, send me a second one right now. And literally right behind that went orange semi. Wow. And all of a sudden I just heard like an audience laughing in my head. Yeah. So I was like, y'all funny. Y'all think <laughs> this is funny, huh? <laughs> That's awesome. I was like, you're, you're funny, but okay. That's awesome. It, it's it's yeah. wild, but the universe cool. is playful. The universe is playful. It likes yeah. whenever you just play, you know, be lighthearted. That's that's another big lesson is trying to be lighthearted about things <laughs> 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 and have fun. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh, Priscilla said, hey, girl, hey. I'm looking at the chat. Everyone's, oh, everyone's saying hi to Priscilla already. Okay, bet. Oh, Benji has- What's up, Priscilla? Benji says, out of all the sacred geometric patterns out there, mm -hmm. oh, okay. So this is pertaining to your merch, which I yeah. like, by the way. And it's kind of funny because I, I thought the same thing before I met you. I was like, there's no Starseed merch anywhere. We need Starseed merch because that could help spread it even more. And well, then I meet you and I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Let's get it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that symbol for the Arcturian specifically. How? Why? So I kind of, I asked them, kind of said like a little prayer or set the intention out, asked them to help me pick out symbols for all of them. And then I kind of just went with my intuition. But um, also the um, Metatron's cube is all about turning into like the physical manifestation, to, uh, manifesting in the material world. And the Octurians are very physical like they have bodies and and reproduce like us so yes. that's kind of what um and you know a master's in technology so that's kind of why i picked that one and i felt a calling towards it it's so cool yeah because we were looking at them and i was like there's literally a different symbol for each and it's so cool to just mm -hmm. just I already yeah. like geometry, so I just think that they're satisfying looking, and then here yeah. we are. They're on it. Yeah, they're beautiful. Um, and how I picked the so for the Pleiadians, it's the uh, sacred sacred flower of life. And if you look back, and I heard it somewhere, and if you look back in ancient civilizations, the sacred flower was big, like all over the place. And I believe that's what the Pleiadians were using to, you know, teach people like back in the day day. 
So I think that one's heavily connected with them. And the Lyrens, I chose the seed of life because that's where everybody came from. They were the first beings. They were like the seed. They were the beginning of the of this galaxy. Yes, ma'am. They were. Mm -hmm. And it's messed up what happened to them. And I'm, I'm just curious. So, so going back to the Lyrens and all the reptilian stuff, what, what do you think the reptilian, like, do you think that they're actually here with us? Like with these techno, these high tech suits that make them look like humans, some people say, or if it, or if they're in a different dimension that we can't see, like, I'm just curious. I think it's probably, I think it's probably a mixture of both. And I believe a lot of them are underground. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me that they could literally like morph and change their bodies um, or do something else high tech that we couldn't even come shape shifting, you know, they, which I'm a little like, oh, I don't know about that. But out of the, some of the things I've seen, I'm like, it's de I guess it's possible, you know. So I think there are a lot of them here. And at first, I didn't want to believe the reptilian thing, um, you know. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the whole government and like Mark Zuckerberg was the biggest one that blew out <laughs> because apparently there was such a there was a meme where like he was so pale and his eyes were so black. People were like, oh, Mark Zuckerberg's reptilian. But yeah, I, it was hard to under well not to understand the concept because like you know we've heard about reptilian the the word the name the breed mm -hmm. the species type for forever mm -hmm. but then it's like i can understand metaphorically how they mm -hmm. could exist but where are for they? real yeah for real yeah because apparently they brought down all the negativity that like separates and divides us between you know politics and supposedly rape mm -hmm. apparently they would uh rape some beings over in the lyran constellations before they destroyed their planets to try and you know steal dna and resources and reproduce yeah them. well and so i've been reading a couple books from uh, a chick named elena danan and she has two wonderful books um one of them is on it it talks about her abduction and she goes in detail about the reptilians and the grays and well the not all grays are bad but the ones that you know, were employed or cloned or whatever by the reptilians. And she has a very strong relationship with the Pleiadians where she's actually like been on their ships. She illustrates all of her experiences. It's really freaking nuts. But she goes in depth about, you know, that whole thing. And that kind of like solidified it a little bit more um, because it ended up just making sense. But um yeah, with the abductions and the sex trafficking and all of that stuff going on, I think the reptilians are, apparently it's not just on Earth, like it's on a galactic scale, like these yeah. things are happening um, all over the place. So that's why Earth is so important, because if we basically, if we could stop it while it's in the beginning stages, then we will be able to prevent so much more, so many more bad things from happening. We really um, and if even if they may if they aren't here physically underground or whatever, which I think that there probably are some at least, um, you know, they use that technology of negative vibrations to make people feel like shit and to invoke fear in people. So even if they wouldn't be here physically, they're mentally messing with uh, messing with people. So. Yeah, and it's messed up because it's like. <laughs> We don't need any more of that stuff here. We're already right. so divided as it is. And especially when COVID happened and all the race wars that were intentionally, you know, planned, which mm -hmm. is so messed up. It's like, I can't, can we get over this please? And just mm -hmm. not try and fight anymore? Like why? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And apparently yeah. from um, those books that I was reading from Elena Danan and kind of in my heart, it also says, you know, we're getting close. And if we could just make it through this, then 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 we'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like we're at the like the peak of the shit show. No, literally, we're, we're about to shit the shit. Like, I honestly do believe that in our lifetime, we will see these beings again. And mm -hmm. I was talking to Benji about this. Sorry to call you out again, Benji. But I told him that I basically had the vision. Um, so I was basically told that I would meet all of y'all over Instagram. Now they didn't say Instagram specifically. So the way they described it, they were like the beings on earth, 
in the future, whenever you're going to exist, they are going to develop this kind of technology that allows them to connect globally or in internationally. Mm -hmm. Maybe, is that the word for global? I'll just say globally because I can't think right now. But they were basically telling me, tell me that there's devices that allows humans to connect globally better than ever before and that they have these things uh, that allow you to... I don't know how they described applications, mm -hmm. but they didn't say applications. They didn't say Instagram, but they said that there's this app. Mm -hmm. And when you use it, you'll be able to meet these other people who are sent here just like you for the same purpose. And you guys will be the first to remember. Wow. And that you have to recruit who you can to spread the word. If people won't accept it, that's fine because we're coming back either way. Mm-hmm literally that and i goosebumps went up and down my body when benji told me he had the same exact thing like he wow. was doing the same thing that just basically we're profits and to spread the word however we can because mm -hmm. they're coming back and it's like do you know how cool that'd be to you know going back to what you were saying in the 2030s that they get to come back here and we mm -hmm. actually get to see them like i really hope and strongly do cross my fingers that you know we get to see this in our lifetimes right now Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, 100%. And I think um, just reaching out and connecting with uh, our star families or doing like CE5 contact is just on a personal level um, is going to help so much and, and just propel so much in our extension. It really helped with my ascension. And um, if we, that's kind of what my main thing is right now is I just want to help connect people with their star families. And then, you know, of course, like showing evidence here and there, but, um, and then just our light, just from us remembering who we are, the person next to us is going to begin to remember who they are. Like your boyfriend. Now he's seeing signs and synchronicities. He has no choice. <laughs> he knows that he's even like, oh, okay, clearly there's something else going on here and I'm like at least mm -hmm. you don't think I'm crazy at this point point. and then mm -hmm. even with my dad he's like whoa that's so cool you know and I'm like yeah it happens but who knows yeah. what the future holds with this it's just it's coming it's scary mm -hmm. but it is coming um yeah. but I did want to ask another question that I end up finding in the chat and Laura I'm so sorry you asked this a while ago but I ended up seeing it if you happen to be drawn to other kinds of symbols aside from the one from your merch store? Mm, I great, great question. So one of the first ones uh, and biggest ones is the Ankh, the ancient really? Egyptian. Yeah. And the oh. eye. And let me see if I can, I have a couple written on my, um, Oh, the affinity symbol, the infinity symbol. And even apparently just from writing these symbols and seeing these symbols, it's triggering awakening in us. Like they, they contain light codes that just like how the, the advertisers do for like McDonald's and Pepsi and all that stuff, they design things in a way that it triggers something in your mind. Um, and that like, you could look, look stuff up on that. Like it's actually, it's legit. It sounds weird, but it's legit. Um, some of these sacred symbols, they do the same thing. And so I meditated on like the Ankh and then I started remembering memories of Atlantis and, um, in, in ancient Egypt. So, um, these can be used as symbols to help you unlock memories basically. Um, so the Ankh was a big one. The trident was a big one for me, the eye and, um, and then, of course, sacred geometry. But those are the big ones that I'm thinking of right now. Ankh is a really great symbol. The Ankh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think from what I understood uh, when I was watching stuff on Gaia, that it literally was just like a person, like pretty much like, I guess, like opening up and receiving the light. And that that um, the loop on the top was basically to connect to the divine. Mm -hmm. From what yeah. I understand. Um, yeah, it, it may have been used as uh, like an energetic device too like physically yeah um i think i might have heard that somewhere on gaia too but it could have been like an advanced piece of technology that we have just like the pyramids like we know that they look advanced they're advanced but we don't know how to work them yet so we don't kind of like that yeah <laughs> like honestly like ancient civilizations like they i in my opinion i think they had way more of an evolution than we do however we are able to live longer 
given modern medicine and stuff like that um, compared to them, but they had the mathematics and the technology mm -hmm. that we're missing. Cause I'm mm -hmm. here like, where's all the fun stuff? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. but we don't need a new smart TV that to where we don't need a remote. We already mm -hmm. have smart TVs. Why do we need to make another TV to not have a remote? That's mm -hmm. literally voice operated. Like what? where's all the fun stuff? Where's like giant robots that can help pick out trash out of the ocean or something like, or flying mm -hmm. cars that operate solely off of solar panels or so, sorry, solar energy. So we don't have to use gas and damage mm -hmm. those on the air even more. And I don't know, there's just- Hopefully there's so it's much coming. Fun. I'm yeah. hoping, <laughs> we're all hoping like the world needs to be fixed. And as Laura, I just saw this comment where she, yes. Her, how she says she also has the message to prepare and protect and we have to protect this planet. But oh, I love that. Are too. And there's apparently so many water crises that are happening in third world countries and trash issues. It's like, I hope we don't damage Earth entirely, but Mother Nature will always win. If we end up destroying her enough, mm -hmm. she will destroy us. So. Yeah. Apparently that's what happened with Atlantis too. That they got to what, like too gr too greedy or too power you know hungry there were, there wasn't a balance they got too just too too much into into power you know and mother nature said nope <laughs> basically um i think it's funny that you say that because i think there was something on gaia that basically said how atlantis wanted to be the number one civilization in the world at the time because they were so advanced compared to average uh other civilizations mm -hmm. um to the point where they ended up fighting with um, Mu, which happened to be another old ancient civilization like Atlantis, um, which is also different than Lemuria. So apparently there's three, not just mm -hmm. Atlantis and Lemuria, there's also uh, Mu. Mm -hmm. But apparently Atlantis was fighting, well, the Atlantean people were fighting these other civilizations for their power. Mm -hmm. So it's, and here I am, you know, growing up watching Disney's Atlantis, and I'm like, oh, it's so peaceful and everything. No. But isn't it interesting how you were drawn to, I was drawn to the Disney Atlantis, and I I don't, you know, you just don't, you, I didn't know why, but I was really drawn to um, that and, you know, some other things where you're like, oh, that's why, because. Yeah, yeah fast legit. forward now, now, now we get the clarity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, I want an explanation 15 years ago, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anyways, so moving on, uh, we are almost done with the questions. Uh, what I have for you now is what is your best piece of evidence? And when I say that, mm -hmm. I don't mean like, A, we have to like prove it to everybody else. But if someone comes up to you saying, you're psycho, prove it to me. Well, <laughs> I've got tons of UFO <laughs> pictures and footage. <laughs> so that would probably, um, that would that would be the main thing was, you know, look at the evidence. And I have been able to change a lot of people's minds through that and open a lot of people's minds. At first they were resistance in the beginning, whenever I was, you know, telling my family and telling my friends that I was seeing these things, they're like, yeah, right. You're seeing things, whatever, brush it off. But as you know, I stuck with it and started like, you know, collecting, actually getting hardcore evidence and also, um, I don't know, like the signs and synchronicities and things just kind of started falling into place. Signs and yeah. synchronicities. It's kind of hard to explain that to people, but like that's hardcore proof right there that you're yep. interacting with something. Yeah. 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 And that's, you know, going back to the whole my boyfriend thing. Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine with other people how they're like, oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Because even at first, you know, even like you were saying, uh, when you were first going through your awakening, you're like, this seems like a little too fairy tale for me, but sure, let's roll with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's let's a little weird, it. but let's give a chance, you know? Yeah. And then after a while, you're like, oh, okay, this is actually legit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I was actually curious, are, are you uh, willing to share uh, one of the CE Vive videos that you showed me before we yeah. met? Yeah. I would like the chat to see this video because mm -hmm. I think this one's really cool. I'm not gonna spoil it this time. Well, CE5 video. The uh the one with the beam? Yes. <laughs> that one's okay. cool. Yeah, that one is cool. Oh, I lost it. Hold on just a second. Sorry, guys. There you go. Oh no, wait, no. okay, here it is. All right, share. 
Yeah, that one was nuts. This was my second encounter. Um, and I, like, stayed up, like, recording them and filming them, like, all night. Because um, I couldn't believe my eyes. But so, okay, let me pause it real quick. Can you guys see it? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So this is a big craft that was in front of me. See the, uh, the you know, the lights on it. And then if you look at the one on the left, a light beam is going to appear from this thing. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. That is yeah. so freaking cool. How long ago was that? <laughs> This was uh, last year. This this was last winter. This was my second encounter ever. Um, I can show you guys an orb real quick too of um, during a that I did during a CE five recently. Oh, this is gonna be good. Oh, it's Orion! Get out! <laughs> yeah. And then look at the bottom left. Bottom left. Oh. Oh my God. Yo, <laughs> you can even see the transparency in that thing too. Uh-huh. Lily, what state do you live in? Missouri. <laughs> I need to middle. come by and do some CE5 with you. Yeah, oh. there's a big one. There it is up close. I wish there were Tampa folks wanting to do CE5. <laughs> so yeah wild. and i think that's um one of the big things is you know people can anybody can do this anybody can make contact in yeah. that also it's it's fun it's fun and people can see it until you see it firsthand um you know it just it just changes your life so anybody can do this and you know there are meditations and stuff that you can do on that um, but i highly recommend it and um, trying to push people to get more excited, you know, get excited and, and try it out for themselves. And I think um, the world is changing. People are becoming more open to it. So yes. it's exciting stuff. It really is. It's just mm -hmm. nice to know that we all have these similar, um, I guess, paths or interests or resonances that we're finally having the answers that we've been searching for. Mm -hmm. And it's like just looking back on things that happened throughout your entire life, you realize, oh, that's why this happens. And it's all falling into place. It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Speaking speaking of that, real quick, um, I so I was an artist. I drew a lot growing up. And growing up, I used to draw feline people, like cat, he, yeah, cat heads. And <laughs> For the proof the lion thing. Yeah, and human bodies and then and I would make up stories about them, you know, I had different characters and stuff. And now real once I learned that about the lyrons, and I'm like, oh, no wonder. Um, so little things like that. Just... Literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Do you have any pictures of, of them that you've drawn? I mean, I understand they're so long ago, but mm -hmm. um, I actually like recreated like a little drawing. I don't know where it is the second. Um but I do want to draw them, like the ones that I see to help, because I think it's kind of hard for people to imagine what these beings look like. So yeah. I actually do want to do series soon on YouTube and everything where I'm explaining experiences with them and I'm actually drawing, you know, yeah. drawing them so people can kind of like follow along with it. So that is to come. <laughs> Everybody drop her a, what is a sub on YouTube? Or <laughs> yeah, sub. Even, though it's not, even though you're not paying, <laughs> go ahead and drop a follow or subscribe on Lily's YouTube channel because she's going to have a lot of interesting stuff. It, God, I cannot talk. Interesting stuff come out. <laughs> I'm already subscribed. I'm looking forward to the meditations. Especially. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think yeah. that'll be cool. And if you're going to be drawing these beings, that, that's definitely going to help because there's not a lot of people who, one, have seen them and number two, are artistic enough to draw them on top mm -hmm. of that. So yeah. you, might, you might have a lot of answers for people that are like you might show a picture that you drew to somebody. They're like, oh, my God, I just dreamed about that last night. Yeah, exactly. And just like looking through these, looking, seeing these things, just like with the symbols, it can like trigger a remembering in you. So that's that's what I'm going for. And the meditations are going to be super important, too. So, yeah, super excited about that. I'm excited for you. Honestly, I think this is so cool that we have so much to share and just mm -hmm. bring together with this. Like, mm -hmm. 
it's it's awesome. But mm -hmm. and uh, and the merch. Yeah, we need to we need to say it loud and proud and help spread this movement, help seed it in the collective consciousness. So if, whenever people are able to see it and start thinking about it, is things are going to change so quickly. Yeah, rapidly mm -hmm. too. And the fact that like again, all these ancient civilizations have mentioned these exact same constellations mm -hmm. thousands yeah. of years ago. Yep, the proof's there. <laughs> it literally, like, all you have to do is just open your eyes, have an open mind to it. I don't mm -hmm. know if, if anybody has seen Don't Look Up yet on Netflix, but oh my gosh, that's that's literally what we're going through right now. <laughs> yeah, I just watched that. It is. <laughs> oh my gosh, that movie stressed me out. <laughs> I was just about to say it was hard to watch, but I was like, it damn was. it, like, that's like real life, though. <laughs> It's, hard to it's watch. kind of scary how accurate they made that movie because I I was like, wow, this is literally what the world's turned to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just wild. But mm -hmm. I do have one more question for you. And if anybody in the chat has any follow up questions for Lily, go ahead and start dropping them in the comment section. Um, we have brushed about this multiple times, but in case you had any more, um, if you have any more resources or tips for those who mm -hmm. are still maybe awakening. Mm hmm. Mm. So I actually just uploaded a mantra, a quick mantra on my YouTube before this that has kind of some affirmations and a little, I don't know if you'd call it like a prayer to help connect with your star family. And but our intention, our our intentions are so powerful in just setting the intention that you are remembering and, you know, wanting to learn more about this and connect with your star family, it's going to, um, it's going to really help bring some answers. Um, some other tips would be meditating. Even if you do just 10 minutes a day in the shower, that's how I started. Um, that's how a lot of things are going to just come, begin to come to you naturally and you'll be able to begin developing your gifts. I so affirm mm -hmm. affirmations, meditations, and, uh, you know, setting intentions would be kind of my, and resting. <laughs> oh, lots of resting. Oh my yeah. gosh. Because you can be so drained from downloading this information, trying to decipher it and say, and figure out what it means. Yeah, oh seriously. Yeah. I ran myself rugged for a while there, just like investigating everything. And I'm sure a lot of, you know, other people can relate. Um, sleep is so important. And actually, whenever we do sleep, we can connect with these higher dimensional beings more easily in the astral realm. So we're actually doing a lot of work in our sleep, too. Um, and we can get answers that way. Um, yeah. You know, just wake up with suddenly like, oh, there's the answer to my problem. So, um, yeah, that would be my other tip is make sure that you get good rest <laughs> and don't feel bad if you're tired. It's OK. And don't think you're crazy because this is more real than it's not. That it's the too. Most important thing. That too. Don't don't disbelieve in yourself. Have that confidence. Have that belief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, There's a reason why you know you feel that way, or you or you're drawn to something. Our gut feeling is usually always right. So it is, and it's mm -hmm. just so wild. And I know I keep going back to this, but just to see everything unfold, it's mm -hmm. like holy crap. And I we thought all have a, piece. a dream and here we are. <laughs> yep. And we all have a piece to the puzzle. We all have a piece to the puzzle. So. That's what I mean. Like we all have something to bring to the table here as mm -hmm. like what they were telling me above, like me and all of us that are, you know, connecting right now, we will be one of the, we are the first to remember. Mm -hmm. Literally that's what they said word for word. You that's will awesome. be the first to remember like you as in me and all of us here mm -hmm. right now that are talking about this. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is. It's so cool and freaky, but awesome and badass at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we'll be paving the way for the people to come. And there will yes. be many, many more. And I've started to notice, too, that a lot of uh, newborns and toddlers, uh, basically, um, I guess, like our generations having kids, a lot of them are super, like, energetic. And, and I guess, like, rainbow children out the ass. Like, they're everywhere. They're super yeah. sweet and super grounding and just super loving, super nurturing. It, there's they're already, already woke. Yeah. They're, they're already woke. And if anybody's raising kids, 
ask them about their dreams. Yeah. Believe yeah. what they say. If they say they saw something, believe them because children are more connected. That's why children are so valuable uh, in the Bible and stuff is because they literally just came from that dimension, Source. just came from that. So they are so fresh with all this knowledge and all these gifts and all these powers that mm -hmm. I think people need to study that. Yeah, for sure. I think the the kids being born now, there's not going to be a problem with them. It's just basically like our generation and older needs to get its shit together. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, I think the kids will be fine. We just got to, um, you know, allow the old system to fall and and nurture these kids, you know, because they have they, they probably have more answers than we do. <laughs> yeah. And they can remember a lot more. It's like kids can't make up that much stuff like if mm -hmm. they're gonna talk about what they saw they're parakeets they literally mimic and replicate what they've been exposed to mm -hmm. so yeah i do have a question in the chat we have a question that says may i ask for a personal reading because you mentioned you do stars uh stars yeah yeah gina do you have a instagram if you could reach out to me on there i can do a reading for you Yes, I have uh, Lily's link tree in the description of this YouTube video. Hopefully it's there. And on the link tree, it has all of her necessary social media profiles, her merch mm -hmm. store, uh, where you can contact her for personal readings. I might hit you up on a personal reading. Let's do it, girl. I might. <laughs> you never know what answers you might find. But. Yeah, and, and what I've noticed from, it's really interesting because even though, you know, I've been developing my psychic abilities and we all have our unique gifts, having another person's perspective, they may pick up on things that you haven't thought of yet. Just like one of the clairvoyant um, picked up on the Lyrans, the other, the psychic picked up on the Pleiadians before I, you know, had developed my gifts. So um, yeah, and it's just pretty interesting. It's always nice getting a, you know, a second input and insight into it as well. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how you say like having that, I got uh... That clarity or um what's the word i'm looking for i guess that i can't think of the word never mind it escaped <laughs> it'll come back to you after the show I was, I was like, what, what's the word that like i can't even describe what the word is i'm trying to think of wow i'm dead today <laughs> you're good you're good it's but okay it's, it's like having a, a oh confirmation confirmation yes yes that's that's mm -hmm. what i'm thinking of um because even uh priscilla quantum witch um she recommended a uh, another starseed channeler who mm -hmm. i contacted and did a reading with and mm -hmm. within the first 10 seconds he's like okay orion and arcturian and he went into it and i was like wow yeah like everybody literally brings in a piece to the puzzle mm -hmm. we're a gigantic potluck here mm -hmm. yeah it's amazing so 100 if anybody else has any other questions go ahead and ask them now lily if you would like anything else to say mm, i think uh i can't think of anything at the second <laughs> um, just hang in there yeah um, <laughs> we'll say that yeah just hang in there um and it's you know don't stress your out yourself out or um think you have to have everything figured out right away it's the universe kind of just leaves you breadcrumbs and it's like we we get another piece of the puzzle as we go and um and also community like just having you guys to talk to and meeting other star seeds is so so huge it helps um, a lot mm -hmm. so thank you to you mm -hmm. And thank you to everybody else who is here and everybody else who is on earth here for mm -hmm. this mission, whatever's going to happen. Mm -hmm. it's, we're all here together. Mm -hmm. so. And we got backup up there. We do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we do. We got the best backup. We are. We're, we're above the U.S. military at this point. Yeah. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We got this. We got yeah. this. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on tonight. You mm -hmm. had a fantastic uh, energy here tonight. Thank you. I, of course, as well as, Pris as Priscilla and Benji, but thank you for being here tonight. This yeah. was really, really cool. And mm -hmm. if anybody wants to, you know, have an interview with me and help share their Starseed stuff, even to do a second interview, if you would like to do it again, or Benji or Priscilla, feel mm -hmm. free to hit me up because we, we are starting something big here. This mm -hmm. is a really big movement. 
and I'm I want to get an Arcturian hoodie. I'm not gonna lie, but I have like 30 hoodies. Like I'm literally wearing one right now with the giant alien head on it. Dude, oh let me. If anybody uh is still on, here's one of the star oh, seed one. This is a that's sweatshirt. So cool. And then here's a Lyran one. Oh, I like the color of that one, the maroon. Yeah. And then I've got different ones um, where they have like Octurian at the top and stuff. But there's a couple examples. Girl, I've ordered so many of them already. I just, I love all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so cool. But, like, literally, I was just thinking about that. There needs to be a Starseed merch store. And then I meet you literally within a week of that thought. And you have yeah. to have a Starseed you merch know, store. You know what's weird is I've been wanting to do the merch for a while. And I knew that was just going to be a big, quick way to help spread the word and build a community. And then, you know, I was kind of like stumbling on actually doing it. And then I watched an interview. Um, these two chicks were starting um, a, like a Starseed school. And then they were talking about their merch that's going to be coming out, the Starseed merch. And they're like, it's going to be really huge. It'll help seed in the collective. And I'm like, no, that's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're all like on the same page here. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's awesome. Oh, girl, keep, keep doing it, honestly. We're, we're, we're doing everything we need to do. We're making all the right moves in all the right places. Mm -hmm. So it's yep, coming. Be, yep, there will be many more to come. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Of course. Uh, just uh, linger for a moment after I close the okay. the stream because I'd like to you know talk to you a little bit more. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for watching tonight. Again, Lily, thank you. This was a fantastic interview. And if anybody wants to you know share the word and help other people find their home, come on on here. Feel free to share, post about this. Get we need to bring the people in. If you want to interview other people, do other. Let's go. We got the guys. <laughs> so I hope everybody has a great night. Thank you so much for supporting us by being here tonight and being such a great chat to engage with. You are all amazing, and we love all of you. And we are all here together to make this work. We got mm -hmm. this, guys. So everybody have a great night. And go ahead and drop Lily a follow on her YouTube. And we'll see mm -hmm. y'all next week. All right. Good night, guys. Mm -hmm.